Hi, I'm George Tunis, and I'm here to introduce you to Hardwire today. It's a new concept in composites, basically born out of the molding industry, where uh, I spent a lot of my career molding large structural parts using fiberglass and carbon fiber. And quite frankly, there were a few limitations with those materials. We loved glass, but it tended to be very thick. Uh, we needed to put a lot of material into the large type parts we were molding uh, in a past company of mine, Hardcore, where we were molding large bridge decks or uh, large railroad cars. We also looked at carbon fiber for a lot of the applications, and uh, we found it to be, in the industrial markets, just a little too expensive, uh, somewhat difficult to work with. And probably the largest limitation was the ability to bond with resins such as vinyl ester or polyester, really the workhorses of the composites industry. So after a four-year uh, research program looking at ways to get higher stiffness into large parts, uh, looking at ways to get higher off-axis properties, things like tear resistance and shear resistance, we came up with the concept of hardwire. And you, you see the product in various forms displayed uh, here on, on the tabletop. Basically, hardwire is made out of uh, very high strength twisted steel cords. These individual cords are made for us exclusively by Goodyear. And this one little cord, for example, has 12 high strength wire filaments wrapped by one, creating almost a micro rebar, a very rough surface that forms a mechanical interlock with the type of resins like polyesters, vinyl esters, epoxies. What's interesting about the material is it is steel in its most technically advanced form. Essentially, uh, hardwire is um, about 11 times stronger than traditional steel, regular steel being about 36 KSI. The individual filaments here in hardwire, uh, we can make up to 450, all the way up to 525 KSI. So it is extremely strong steel. It has a very, very fine microstructure. That microstructure, um, we're able to create that. It's called perlite. We're able to create that because we start with incredibly high quality steel which is then drawn into very fine filaments where we can control the metallurgy because of very uh, fast heat transfer of the fine filaments. We then take that, wrap that into a cable, and put it in a geometry that will create a mechanical interlock. Just like a screw is screwed into resin or into wood, we create that same type of interlock with the hardwire cord. Our company, Hardwire, takes the Goodyear cord, lines up hundreds of them uh, into a unidirectional tape, and we create a tape product that is essentially the wire cord bonded together on a scrim material. We found this is the most effective way to, uh, to make um, very, very straight tapes that are easy to handle. We can take the tapes. The tapes are uh, easy to slit. You can just find yourself a seam in there. And the material slits beautifully into more narrow tapes, all kinds of geometries. For the folks that do infusion molding, it's really a special place for hardwire because if you were to look at this under a microscope, compared to the holes that you would see in fiberglass or carbon fiber, the actual holes that the resin is penetrating in hardwire are roughly 100 times bigger than those in glass and 1,000 times bigger than those in carbon. So for guys that are doing infusion, you'll find that this material infuses at a rate uh, that has never before been seen. What's also interesting is it is its own distribution media. Um, if you're using a patented process, we would encourage you to, to, to license that process. But in many cases, hardwire gets around a lot of the existing infusion molding patents where you can actually use the material as a distribution media. Um, the hardwire comes in a variety of forms. We have a zinc coated form, that's the silver. And we also have a brass coated form, uh, which is, is the gold. We're constantly working on new metallurgical uh, treatments on the surface and new chemistries that enhance the bond to vinyl esters, polyesters, or epoxy. Really, the bottom line is, though, if this cord is embedded about an inch to an inch and a half in any type of resin, you'll reach the full breaking strength of the cord before you actually um, break the bond uh, with the resin. One nice thing about the way we make the tapes is we can create literally infusion schemes on the fly. Let's say you're in a boat mold, you want to do a quick layup, and you need an infusion channel. One thing that's really neat about the way we make the cords is you can create those infusion channels on the fly, almost like a Hot Wheels type approach. So you can create infusion schemes right there. You can also use lower density materials. Our hardwire, um, we can put anywhere from one cord per inch all the way up to 23 cords per inch, where it's kind of a maximum density. 
At low density, this material with just four wires per inch, if this was cross-plied in a laminate, you'd end up with a, with a composite that had the same properties as woven roving, uh, except was lighter and uh, actually a bit thicker. So your bending stiffness would be higher. And uh, of course, your infusion speed, you can see this. I mean, it is incredibly permeable. Your infusion speed is going to go through the roof. And the material offers uh, users the ability to put filled resins. So in the past, using glass and certainly carbon fiber, the resins literally had to be unfilled unless they were users were using a process like pultrusion. For guys that were doing infusion molding, filled resins just uh, couldn't happen. Now with hardwire, because it is so permeable, the resin can be filled with microballoons to lower the weight of the resin, uh, inexpensive fillers just to lower the cost, or most importantly for some of these big parts, especially for transportation applications, we can now begin to put a lot of uh, fire retardant fillers in the resin that will control the fire performance. Once we take uh, the material and uh, have a bunch of uh, typical infusion molded composites, here's a nice piece that has been molded uh, using four wires per inch. It would be the equivalent of woven roving. Um, you can see that it forms a very open grid-like structure. Uh, it has a stiffness of about uh, two and a half million um, modulus in both directions. And so it roughly gives you the same properties you would get with a wet laid um, woven roving material. We do recommend with the hard wire that you do put glass on the outside surfaces. We have a lot of great technology for cutting the material in its raw form, but once it's turned into a composite, it does become one of the more difficult materials to cut. So terminating edges, like this, this has been done with glass, is probably the easiest way to not only protect the fiber, uh, but to make the composite uh, easy to cut. Another nice benefit is the material can be put in a sheet metal break and broken. And for doing right angle corners, this is like no other material uh, that exists on the market today. Realize that this 23 ounce uh, or this 23 wire material weighs roughly 100 ounces uh, per square yard. And for anyone that's used to using glass, you can imagine 100 ounces per square yard looks about like a piece of, of uh, thin industrial carpeting. It's very, very thick, very fluffy, and turning right angle corners like this, which are all over the place in boat transoms, they're in uh, bridge decks, all kinds of corners in the world, these type of things would cause wrinkles, and those wrinkles usually limit, it, limit the uh, design stresses. So the ability to break this material is really amazing. And talking about weight, let's just talk about large structures. Most large structures are designed to stiffness. They're stiffness critical. When you use hardwire in a design versus fiberglass, the resulting laminate will be about 70% thinner. And you can almost see that here. This is very, very thin. This is only 40 thousandths. It would be equivalent to 100 ounces of glass that would be 0.1 inches thick. So each layer is not only thinner, but because of the higher material properties of the uh, steel cord, again, steel is 30 million modulus fiber versus uh, glass at 11 million modulus, when you translate all that out, you end up with a composite that's 70% thinner. So for the guys on the shop floor doing layup, instead of 10 layers, that means three layers, which is going to save a lot of time. That also means that you're going to be able to infuse the part much faster. Not only is it more permeable, but there's just less of it. Um, and then in the end, what does that mean for your end customers? Well, it means a part that is lighter. Versus fiberglass, using steel cord in a composite this way, you can end up saving about 40% of the weight on an equal stiffness basis. It will be about roughly equal the weight on an equal strength basis. We've got a lot of examples of where we've molded hard wire in. We've got some ballistic composites. These are, uh, these are not molded using release agents or things typically found in uh, ballistic uh, applications. We molded this just with a, a rubber toughened vinyl ester for multi-hit capability where uh, panels may be shot up or blasted uh, several times and they need to perform over and over again. And we found that just uh, three layers of the material not only can uh, stop the bullet, four layers will stop, uh, this is a 22 long rifle every time, but most importantly, it breaks up the, uh, the fragments. Most composites are usually used with a ceramic system or armor plate system where the initial impact of the bullet is used to, to, uh, on the ceramic is used to break up that, that uh, shell and the composite is used to catch it. Uh, with hardwire, we have a lot of testing going on right now with the U.S. Navy and some other agencies. 
where we're looking at using the hardness of, of the steel composite to not only break the fragments, uh, but also to capture the fragments. And I can tell you that the bullet that came out of this on the other side was ground up like uh, ground up pepper uh, when we caught, caught that fragment. So it's very unique in its, in its ballistic attributes. And I can tell you that you can see here even where the, where the wires popped out of the composite that where the failure stops, it just stops. In fact, we actually see more delamination from a layer of uh, matte fiberglass on the outside than we did from the wire itself. And that's really an attribute of that strong mechanical interlock. You can also take the wire and put it into other things, like wood. You know, this is an example where we've taken a layer of very dense hard wire, we've uh, molded it into the wood structure, and that bumpiness, that, uh, that kind of robust bumpiness that you see in the wire actually will mold into the wood. So we get a mechanical lock with the wood. We don't have to change the resin systems that are typically used with wood. We can use uh, just about anybody's existing resin. And we've tried everything from polyester, phenolic epoxies, vinyl ester. We've even gone so far as to use cementitious resin systems, cements, and found that latex modified cements give us about 90% of the properties that you might find with a vinyl ester or good high performance epoxy. The last thing to show you is that we can also make the material sticky. This is one of my favorites. Uh, anyone that's out there doing large part layup, I guarantee that you're probably using an awful lot of 3M77 spray to hold your plies in place. That's a labor uh, time consuming step. It, it consumes a lot of, uh, of material and you're always creating these areas in the composite that are suspect. If a lot of adhesive spray can block the flow of resin, create weak spots in the composite. What we can do is in our uh, equipment, we can actually apply a sticky film to the material, and it's actually quite sticky, so that you can stick this on the wall, you can stick it on a mold, you can stick it on uh, just about any layup. And this comes with a variety of different adhesive layers that we can make it extremely sticky for upside down work under a bridge, lightly sticky, maybe on a vertical uh, surface, or maybe just incredibly lightly tacky just to help you position your ply so that they don't slip around in, in a typical molded operation. Last, we do get asked a couple of questions about corrosion. We always have corrosion tests underway. This is a particular sample that uh, we've had out actually on a very salty beach in a tide zone where we have the material embedded in a um, milled glass reinforced epoxy. Uh, we've been able to, to uh, take this material. We routinely uh, attempt to try to get the material to wick moisture. I mean, this is a purposeful test. And we're constantly pulling up new pieces. Well, I'm not going to be able to do that today without a pair of pliers, but I can tell you that every time we do pull it up, we have not found any wicking to date. The corrosion performance, once it's embedded in resin, really a composite becomes a fiber reinforced paint job of exceptional quality. So if you've done a good job of putting the material into a composite, polyester, vinyl ester, epoxy, any of the resins we've discussed, even uh, cementitious systems, we're finding that even with very small coverage, you can see that there, it's not much, um, that we can protect the fiber uh, very, very well. Last, on some of the wood composites, we wanted to let people know that, um, you know, in the real world, you got to attach things, and the hard wire is incredibly tough stuff. You can, uh, you can bang nails through it, you can drill it, you can put staples through it. And just to give you an idea of the type of toughness, I would recommend that you try this with any commercial fiber. If you just take one of the wires, tie it in a knot, if you were to do this with carbon, it would already be broken. If you did it with glass, it would already be broken. Kevlar might last. But you can tie that knot as tight as you want, put this back in an Instron machine, and still realize the full strength of this cord. And that's really an attribute uh, to the toughness. So just as a general overview, again, the material comes in a variety of forms and cord types, a bunch of uh, different metallic coatings. And we're now working on uh, conversion coatings to help it bond to material. It can be put in virtually anything from vinyl ester, uh, urethane-based wood adhesives, uh, polyester, cements, and it comes in a variety of different densities. So uh, when you contact Hardwire, many times you will get me, and we will be able to set you up with a spreadsheet to help you design. We offer that design assistance. And once you get locked in, you can specify the material in any density from one wire per inch up to 23 wires per inch giving you a range of material properties from half a kip uh, per inch all the way up to eight kips of force per inch. 
and you end up with composites. Let's just take this one. This particular composite is equivalent to a glass composite that would be roughly this thick. So it's a tremendous advantage in thickness and in weight. Um, this particular composite, uh, which is a tapered piece, we molded this one out of vinyl ester, uh, shows you that basically if we tested this, we'd get about 267 KSI tensile strength, and the modulus on this piece in a composite form is about uh, 14 million. So it's carbon-like in its uh, material properties. It's not quite as light as carbon fiber, but it processes with virtually any technique, any resin, and uh, is, uh, at the end of the day, a much cheaper alternative. Thanks.